whether it's the Amish family or somebody else, they want to kill them. They want to crush them, like to send them to a camp. These people are just unbelievably evil, and those of us who are working against this, who are opposed to it, must never forget that. We're against, we're working against people who are, who are thoroughly evil with a capital E. That's right. Lou Rockwell, I've been asking the questions. I want to see where you want to go when we come back and we'll take calls. LouRockwell.com. Uh, we've got Mr. Libertarian with us today. We're Folks, the reason I start hyperventilating on air, people that know me in person, I don't really do that in private very often unless you know, I'm seeing something just amazing happen in front of me, uh, good, bad, or ugly. But when you've read... No, no, no exaggeration, probably 500 history books by the time I was 15, 16 years old. Hundreds of Time Life books uh, on top of that. I mean, I, I mean, I would go to the library and just get stacks of books and read them because it was so interesting. I probably read over 100 books on naval histories uh, with England and Spain and Portugal and the Dutch and the East India Company. And I'm not up here bragging, oh, I read a bunch of stuff. I got into it because a history book was like every page was action and the wars and the subterfuge and the false flags and the secret societies and, you know, uh, just Heinz Hobel's books, like 800 pages long on the order of the death set. And again, I don't just believe one book. I probably read, let's not exaggerate, 30 books on the SS. The Stunstoffel. And you sit there and you read all this and how they were battling this secret society and battling that secret society and how how the OSS was run by uh, this particular secret society. And and you're it's just amazing. And then you go tell the public that and they look at you like you're a crazy person because you're informed. So that's how Lou Rockwell and I can just sit here and talk about the Jacobins and the French Revolution and Plato and all that because we've read their books. We, we know what they want. I mean, the French Revolution folks took reasonable anger at the system and then said in their own writings, we're going to have total power and be greater than any king. And we're going to overthrow and kill the Christians and, you know, just all this horrible stuff. And then you're reading this stuff, they're Satanist. And then it makes you a stronger Christian when you're like, and then you read this book by, the, by them, and it's how they want to end the family, have nine-day work weeks, make everyone their slaves, have the general public where we can't even talk. And how they had to fundamentally create a cosmology to get the serfs to rebel against the kings but make them absolute kings. So that's why I look at Bernie Sanders. He makes me angry. He's dangerous, folks. And I think Sanders knows exactly who he is and who he works for. Now, I'm ranting. I want to go back to Lou Rockwell. But that's why I get so concerned. Because if you caught a criminal in, in, in your house robbing your computers, you'd have an adrenaline rush. And you'd probably go run, lock yourself in a room and get a gun or whatever. Or you'd go tackle them or whatever you would do. But you would get upset and you'd be jumping around. People say, well, that's normal. I get upset because I'm watching now in fast motion, classical, flaming, in fuego, French Revolution, Illuminati, Jacobin, uh, Bolshevik science. I mean, I know it. And they know it. The same colors, the same slogans, the same names, and they're even power crazed. So that's why I start having adrenaline rushes here talking about it, Lou Rockwell, because I know you know about it. Ron Paul knows about it. But so much of the public is ignorant to how much danger we're in. And I, and I hate to keep stressing that, but they're doing things they've never done before. Like you pointed out in a, in a piece we aired last week that, and, I, and I'd like you to elaborate on that and then just talk about whatever subjects you'd like to get to. About used to, they'd have War Powers Acts and, you know, debate them for three months to give the president authorization in Iraq, which was wrong, which wasn't done properly. Now the Republicans go, you know what? We just want to give you unlimited 360 global. A Democrat senator admits it's global martial law. His words, not mine. And they had White House run Media Matters and these other groups write articles saying I was a dangerous kook and not even showing the clip of the senator saying it lying to their constituents, trying to keep them in the dark. So A, can you speak to that? And then B, how big a danger they are? Because you look at World War I, World War II, and other big global events, all major historians agree on record that we are approaching an event horizon for another World War scenario. And we see our leaders calling for it. This time we have nuclear weapons. Are we really going to let this elite destroy the planet? Because as you pointed out, the Rockefeller world government wasn't this psychotic. Lou Rockwell. No, and these people, uh, they seem to be psychotic. 
Uh, when you hear a guy like Bernie Sanders, or for that matter, the Republicans, uh, most of them talking, except Trump, talking about what has to be done to Russia. U.S., of course, has been systematically, despite its promise, moving NATO up closer and closer to the Russian border, seeking to uh, take all the intervening territory and control it, put U.S. weapons there, aggressive weapons, aggressive armies. And uh, it's very, very dangerous. It's something, in fact, that as bad as the Cold War was, didn't happen in the Cold War. Or rather, the one time it happened was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, and that all happened because the U.S. had put uh, its big missiles right in the Turkish area of Turkey, right on the Russian border, that could easily get to Moscow where they wouldn't have a chance for a second strike. It was very destabilizing. It was secret. So in order to end the Cuban mis Missile Crisis, uh, Khrushchev said, look, we'll get our missiles out of Cuba if you get your missiles out of Turkey. John F. Kennedy, thank goodness, agreed to that. And uh, that ended the crisis. And it was a very good thing to get rid of those missiles so close to the U.S. or so close to Russia. But these days, of course, you don't have that uh, warning time when missiles are launched. Everything happens very fast. There are uh, atomic bombs la launch from satellites. And of course, the planes, uh, seaborne missiles, um, it's uh, drones, I guess. They're going to have drones with atomic bombs on them. Uh, oh, yeah, the Russians have sea launch cruise missiles that can go 2,000 miles. And they fly at about well, 100 is, feet. You, know, you can't stop is, them. You can't stop so them. So why, why, why don't you want to be, why don't you want to be, you don't have to be friendly with other countries, but why not at least be non-belligerent? I mean, it's in everybody's interest not to be belligerent. Eisenhower be... was a general that conducted major wars. He wasn't perfect, but he fired L.L. Lemnister and Curtis LeMay when they wanted to do a secret uh, uh, bomber attack on Russia. I mean, where are those type of people now that, I mean, because as you said. No, and John and uh, Kennedy fired them, which maybe had something something to do with his, uh, with his assassination. When well, they wanted to stage a false flag by having the, the apparent Cubans, would have been Americans pretending to be Cubans, shoot down an American jetliner in order to give a justification for invading and, and uh, taking over Cuba. Operation Northwood. So here we are yeah, desperately so. talking about trying to stop the, these psychos. I'm sorry, go ahead. How do we get that same urgency through to the public that this isn't a game, sir? Well, this, we have to do what we're doing. We have to try to explain things to people. We have to point out evil when we see evil. We have to point out the fact that just to take what's going on in Europe uh, with the vast uh, um, inundation of immigration, they want to destroy, they want to certainly make Christianity a minority religion in Europe, even more of a minority religion than it is. They'd like to do the same here. This is why this is happening. Uh, but it's also very good for political control. The more you can destabilize the society, the more you can break That's up right. social institutions, the easier it is for the government and the people controlling the government to uh, live high out on the hog and, and uh, also enjoy the destruction. These people, we can't ever forget, they enjoy war. They like sending young men out to kill or be killed. They get a charge out of it. Now, Remember Kissinger you know, called them cannon can't, fodder. You know, our, we can't imagine the next door neighbor or us or our friends ever wanting to do something like that. But there are people who not only like to do it, they glory in it. They love doing it. And uh, so these are the people who rise to the top of government. These are the people who rise to the top of militaries, especially a, a global imperial military like the U.S. is. And uh, these are not good people. So what can we do? We can try to tell the truth. Uh, we can, uh, you know, try to try to defend religion, try to defend God. As you pointed out earlier, the state hates God. It can't stand the idea of something that people have a, a loyalty to it above the state. It's supposed to be nothing above the state. You're supposed to bow down to the state. Uh, who knows? I always think that they actually look back with in their secret ceremonies and so forth, look back on the glory days of the Egyptian pharaohs when the state was God. I mean, it was literally God. People worshiped the Pharaoh. Um, in some sense, they'd like that again. Uh, these, are, <laughs> these are crazy people. They're evil people. And they, I, I'm afraid they're actually capable, even if they don't set out intentionally to do it, they're capable of setting in a, a chain of events similar to what happened before World War I uh, to start another world war. Uh, I noticed that uh, uh, the Russian foreign minister just said, you know, if, if, if the West introduces ground troops into Syria to fight against Assad, that, for example, could very well become World War III. And are they willing to do it? Yes, of course, because the U.S. has targeted the three anti-Islamicist, anti-terrorist regimes in the Middle East, that is Iraq, Syria, and Libya. Destroyed two of them, half destroyed the other one, 
Why are they doing that? Chaos. All empires love chaos because it's the old Roman slogan of divide and rule. Uh, so that the more they can, more trouble they can cause, the easier it is for them to rule. So there's that, but they just, they, they like killing, they like chaos, they love the idea of watching, uh, you know, in the, uh, watching the drone films as they, uh, uh, as, they bomb, uh, as they bomb people's homes. They love that stuff. And as you point out, Hillary, just glorying in the most psychotic, these people are all, of course, sociopaths, psychopaths. Uh, Hillary just glorying in the, uh, in, in the death of, of Gaddafi and the hor horrendous torture death. I'm not a fan of Gaddafi, um, but he was a lot better than what came after him. Same with Saddam Hussein. He was the protector of Christians, by the way. Same with Assad. Let's uh, expand on that. Let me ask you that question, Lee Rockwell. That's a very important question. Of, they're protectors of Christians. That's why they wanted, one reason they wanted to get rid of them. So there's, a, there's, a, there's definitely a, a culture war going on. Uh, but we got along with the Muslims before these people stirred everything all up. We can be peaceful with the Muslims. Uh, whether they should be over in our country is, you know, another question, or whether they should be in such masses in Europe. Some are fine. Uh, by the way, uh, Christians are not allowed to immigrate to Saudi Arabia. I don't want to shock anybody, but they don't, <laughs> they don't want Christians there. That's okay with me. They have the right to have their own society. We have the right to have our own society, especially when somebody who's an immigrant is immediately put on fantastic welfare, has all kinds of benefits. Of Absolutely, action, it's designed to bring them here. And actually has more benefits and, uh, uh, and uh, special deals than American citizens. That's right, Lou Rockwell. Let me ask you this question. I want to go to some calls for you and talk about the election some. Yeah, because folks have been holding before you came on, but all these questions are very, very good. I'm not putting uh, Vladimir Putin on a pedestal, but I actually do follow the real policies in Russia. They seem to be actually trying to reform it the West encircling it and, and, and running economic warfare is making them very hard to do that. But they are incentivizing Christianity. They are incentivizing family. They are cutting taxes. They are. And then Putin comes out and says, and I've watched like hour long talks of his ministers that are translated into English on RT. It, and, they, and they sit there like it's my show or, or you talking and they go, there is a bizarre you know, plan in the West to end the family, to institutionalize everything. Similar to the tyranny we saw under the Bolsheviks. And, uh, or North Korea, and we do not want to do this. And the carbon tax is meant to sabotage and break down nation states. And, I mean, they really get it. It seems like the Russians, uh, Putin claims he was a big reader of Solzhenitsyn and, and met with him a bunch before he died. And, and Solzhenitsyn said, you have to stand up for Russia and, you know, don't kill all our people. This plan is meant to kill everybody. Solzhenitsyn basically wrote books about all this before he died. I mean, what has happened if Russia begins to catch the liberty bug? And, again, I'm not lionizing it, but Russia verbally, but also in action, is standing against everything the West is doing. And so they get treated to George Soros bragging that he helped Honcho the overthrow of the elected government in Ukraine. Well, you know, uh, Putin's a politician. It's a government. It really can't be good. But on the other hand, we should compare what happened before. What was it like under communism? I mean, Russia has made unbelievable progress towards civilization, towards free markets, for its private property. Is it perfect? No, unlike us, I guess. No, it's not perfect. Uh, but, you know, everybody in Russia, for example, all the Christians in Russia and the vast majority of people are Christians. Uh, Putin, in fact, was baptized, secretly baptized as an infant by his wonderful mother. Uh, and he, he talks about this at a time when that was a criminal offense. Uh, so Christianity continued to exist in Russia. Now it's come back uh, to full flower. Everybody is aware that the CIA's group called Pussy Riot uh, they sent these girls, these young girls, um, being paid into uh, the chief cathedral in Moscow during... Uh, They're during foreign the spies. It's not a free speech issue. They, were, they, they, they took off their shirts. One of them got up on the altar and urinated on the altar. And so when the, when the Russian police came in and took them out of there and arrested them, this was, oh, what a horrible thing. They're condemning free speech. Well, you know, everybody in Russia was aware of what an unbelievable uh, blasphemous act this was. Uh, per promoted by the U.S., uh, defended here in this country, although they didn't give the details. Um, so that's just one small thing. The Russians realize they're being targeted. Uh, they realize they're not liked because, because Christianity has come back there. It shows, it shows why no matter how much it's stamped upon, no matter how, much, you know, uh, how, how many tens of thousands of uh, Russian Orthodox priests were murdered in the most horrific way under Stalin, uh, and, uh, you know, tens of millions of Christians 
uh, murdered, tortured, 